resources and to keep in contact with you to let you know how you can support your local congregation as well as your community. Well, I hope that you'll be able to go to the website and find out more about Education Sunday because the website has all kinds of helps, right? What, uh, what kinds of things? Do you, do you recall? Well, a church or individual can register on our website, okay. faithandeducation.com, to participate in Education Sunday. And then once okay. you register, it will give you access to a library of resources that can, that can help you promote Education Sunday from sermons, Bible studies, all sorts of things. And, and remember... While Education Sunday is September 3rd, it's one day, it's really the kickoff to a year-long yes, campaign yes, yes. Um, to promoting education in your church and in your faith community. And, and I think that's an important piece because mm -hmm. promoting education and raising the standards and encouraging students to do their best uh, to honor God with all their capacity mm -hmm. academically as well mm -hmm. uh, is not a one Sunday effort. That's something you do right. all year long. So, so faith and education... Uh, and our campaign mm -hmm. uh, invites people to participate all year long. So, mm -hmm. so pastors, if you want to know what you can do to encourage your church, your parents, your students to do their very best for kingdom work academically and in church, go to faithandeducation.com mm -hmm. and sign up and you'll get emails. And aren't there scholarships as well? We have, yeah, quarterly scholarship contests, lots of great opportunities. So. Yeah. So you're probably thinking, where can I help a student get a scholarship? Go to faithandeducation.com, find out about the quarterly scholarship, get your students to apply. What an opportunity for you to make a difference uh, for the students in your church. Now let's go back to Sergio uh, wow. de la Mora. Powerful, powerful, powerful. What stood out in your mind? The me I see is the me I will be. Wow. He, uh, wow. Pastor Sergio is awesome though. He, he um, has been a, a big influence in my life uh, going back Several years ago, my wife and I had the opportunity to sit down with him for a couple of hours. He didn't even know me, and, and he spoke some things into my life yeah. and uh, impacted me in ways that uh, I'm just always in awe of how God uses him, especially just to, to speak. He's not one of those guys that talks a lot, but man, when God gives him a word, there's just such, um, such power yeah. in what he shares. Well, it was a powerful, powerful interview that Dr. Ramirez uh, helped us with. And you know, what a privilege for a father, a pastor, mm -hmm to sit next to his PhD daughter yeah. who's being interviewed. And, and you saw the shock in his face. He goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not used to hearing my daughter address as Dr. Contreras. Yeah. This, is, this is a special event for me. Yeah. And, and, and I just want to say to pastors who are watching or, or if you know your pastor, to encourage him, to encourage him to help his children do their very best. And, and again, faithandeducation.com gets you rolling, gets you some help. And so we just want to let you know that with God, all things are possible. You might be thinking about your son or your daughter, and maybe they've struggled in school. With God, all things are possible. You probably have a PhD in your home, and we need to dedicate our kids to, uh, to God, their academics to God. And we as mom and dad, we've got to get involved because if you heard Dr. Contreras, she said, you know, my parents took me to school. My parents were checking my homework. My parents were encouraging me. Now, she had to write the papers, right? Yeah. But, but when you know your mom and dad and your church is supporting you, what a difference that makes. Now, I want to clarify on something. You said when, when we as mom and dad, he, he's not saying that we're the mom and dad. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it was just a yeah, figure yeah, speech. Right, right. Now, Dr. Reyes, Red though, parents, you're, you're yes. the father yes. of, a, of a doctor, yes. Ramirez. Yes, yes. So what's right. it like for you? You know, it's exciting to see what God will do with your daughter, with your son, mm -hmm. when you just help them and encourage them academically to do their best to honor God with all the skills that they have. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, you've got to look at report cards. You've got to talk to teachers. You've got to do homework. You've got to review homework. You've got to learn how to do the new math and, and all the new yeah. things that they're doing because everything's changing, right? And so uh, it forces parents to really turn off the TV and get engaged with their, with their students to help them do a better job, um, to, to move them away from the media, away from the iPads, away from the iPhone, mm -hmm. and to get them to read to you. And you read to them, and, and you ask questions about school, and so you, know, you debrief with them, and tell me about school, and what did you learn? Teach me, you be the teacher, and teach me. And there's just so many things that, that a mom or a dad can do to really help their son or daughter do well in school. And that's what this whole program is about. 
Right. And so for right now, I want to introduce you to a very special guest that we have with us, Brother Isai Casares. We're really glad that you're with us. I understand that, that you've been married to Samantha mm -hmm. uh, for about seven years, and yeah. you have a two-year-old boy mm -hmm. and a four-year-old boy. So, so you're getting a lot of ideas from this discussion, aren't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm writing down everything <laughs> I'm listening to. That's great. Yeah. So now where do you serve? I serve at Northwood Church uh, in Keller, Texas okay. in the DFW area. And what is your role there? And do they, are, are, do they have a senior pastor? Or you yeah, senior pastor? no, uh, the senior pastor is Bob Roberts, uh, okay. and he's in Israel right now, but okay. doing amazing work. Uh, I serve uh, on the executive team as the discipleship pastor. Wow. Yeah. So I understand you went to, to a secular university? That's right. Yeah, University of Texas at Austin. So what was that like? Hook'em Horns. <laughs> yeah, Hook'em Horns, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was an incredible experience. Uh, there was, uh, it was a new world, diversity. Uh, I grew up in the Rio Grande Valley where, you know, majority of, uh, is Hispanic. Uh, and so I was able to see diversity and just uh, so many different uh, schools of thought. And uh, some were challenging. Some challenged my, my faith. Wow. So how did you stay close to the Lord when it came to, to being in this new city, this new school, all the diversity? How, how did you stay close to Jesus? Yeah, uh, there was many things. Uh, one of those things was uh, being part of a local church. Uh, another part was having friends that were followers of Jesus that were there as well, seeking him uh, and pursuing him that were peers that I could look to. Um, and having godly people, mentors in, in my life that, from my, my grandfather, my, okay. my mom, okay. aunts and uncles that really just I connected with regularly and, and prayed for me. So if there's a, a, a student that's out there watching right now and they're thinking about college, what word of encouragement, what tip would you give them? Right, well, uh, I think the, the, one of the very important things is that we... We think we're not going to face challenges, and that can be very, very dangerous. Uh, so being ready to face a challenge is so important. And, he, and here's the thing. When you face a challenge, sometimes in our culture, it's like, don't ask for help. You, you go for it. You yeah. do it. You can yeah. do it. That's right. But knowing when to ask for help is so important. Okay. Uh, and so when you have mentors in your life, when you've made relationships with your professor, uh, with other people in your local church that are praying for you, know when to ask for help. Uh, it, it's simple, but it's, it's huge. Right. Mm -hmm. So asking God to, to, to show you who should be your mentor, who you should connect to, what Christian discipled adults are available in your life, and maybe as pra parents praying that God send the Absolutely. right mentor, the, the right leader, the right yeah. uh, uh, follower of Christ, even a peer to my son or my daughter to help them to yeah. do better in school. So, so did you face any challenges when you're in school? Uh, all, all kinds of challenges, <clears throat> financial, academic, you know, and friendships, and name it. Uh, that there's going to be challenges uh, right. with uh, in your classes, and so absolutely, sometimes we miss great opportunities just because we're no. I, I got to be able to do this. I'm not tough if I don't get through mm -hmm. this, and so. Uh, being able to be humble and uh, and just uh, have that wisdom and ask God for that guidance. Like, who is it that I need to ask for help in Amen. this Amen. time? So we, we want to trust in the Lord. Absolutely. Well, we want you to see a video that helps you to know what you can do, what your church can do to participate in a national campaign to help our students know mm -hmm. how to trust in the Lord. Watch this. I think that our biggest problem uh, with our education system is that in different school districts, different states, uh, the goalposts are in different locations. The kids are just not receiving the same quality of education that they do in certain districts. Powerful, powerful words. Well, Brother Bobby Miner, what stood out to you in this program? I would say one of the things um, in the, the Pastor Sergio interview it's just understanding that when when our kids, when people make bad choices, bad decisions, mm -hmm. it's because they have a heart condition. Yes. And that how key it is to for all of us to experience this turning of the heart that Pastor yes. Sergio talks about. That you know when our when our hearts are turned toward Christ, then um, our hearts can then be turned towards each other, and it changes everything. But it starts with us turning our hearts back to Christ. You know, he he seems to be calling for a national heart revolution. Yes. Uh, it's time to turn our hearts back to Christ. And when your hearts, as you said, are turned back to Christ, mm -hmm. 
the whole world opens up. The opportunity just changes. And I like what he said, where your heart is, you know, that, that's where your treasure is. We, we work with the heart and all of a sudden big things can happen in a person. Well, he life. wrote a book called The Heart Revolution. That's right. He did. Check it out. <laughs> so, it's a good, it so, is a good book. So you ought to just yeah. look up Sergio de la Mora yeah. and Heart Revolution and yeah. you'll find this book that may help you with your son, your daughter, to help them to know how to, how to pray yeah. to help God change their, to help God help them to, to change their hearts because God is the 